Hey everybody, Jason here from PyQuant News, bringing you another video that walks you through how to use Python for algorithmic trading and quantitative finance. Today we're gonna to talk about something that's super important that most people don't get right, and that is risk management. Yes, and what's the easiest way to perform risk management? No, it's not a stop loss, it's hedging. So today we're going to look at a very effective way to come up with a hedge based on the underlying factors that drive your portfolio. We're gonna use the famous Fama French factors to understand what's driving the excess returns of a portfolio and figure out how to hedge it. And we're gonna do it all with Python. You guys ready? Let's go. So we use our favorite IDE, which in my case is Jupyter Notebook. You can use any IDE that you want. We're going to bring in our imports. So I use Y Finance for data. To get factor data and some other super interesting economic and financial data, you can use Pandas Data Reader. You can look it up, obviously it's free. Uh, Pandas date time stats models to do some regression and then we're gonna ignore warnings just in case we're getting some deprecation. I'm just gonna create a super simple mock portfolio here, Apple, Microsoft, and Google, and we're gonna pull in some data for the last five years or so. You can create any portfolio that you want, you can pull in data from any time that you want. This is just the example I will be using here. Let's look at the data. So we need to change this to the closing price. And what we end up with is a Pandas data frame with the closing prices over the last five years or so. Okay, we need to create the portfolio returns and this is just the simple returns. And what we end up with is now a Pandas data frame with the percentage returns across those three stocks. So we're assuming a one share per stock portfolio. We're just figuring out what the overall portfolio return is. This is a very quick and dirty way to do this kind of work. Obviously there's assumptions I'm making, like who would actually buy one share of each of those stocks? I don't know, uh, but you can weight it however you want or use your actual portfolio data. We're gonna name this series. I said it was a data frame, it's actually a series. So now we actually have a header, okay? Now let's go grab some Fama and French factor data. So a lot of folks aren't necessarily familiar with this, with this data. It's a pretty academic type thing. Uh, but what you're seeing here is returns of a so-called basket portfolio. So this is actually the market rate minus the risk-free rate. This is a portfolio of small minus big stocks. So small cap stock returns minus big cap stock returns. It measures small cap performance, high minus low. So this is basically growth versus value. And then the risk-free rate, okay? So what this is giving you is a way to measure portfolios against these styles, basically risk premium, equity risk premium, size and value. Join the data with the price data and we've got this really nice data frame that has the portfolio returns aligned with the risk-free rate, which is here, the value factor returns, the size factor returns, and the so-called risk premium. Okay, so what do we do next? Let's grab the excess returns of our portfolio. So the excess returns of the portfolio are those returns above and beyond that of the risk-free rate. So that represents the so-called equity premium of the portfolio returns that you earn by taking the risk of holding equities above the so-called risk-free rate, okay? So now let's actually model these excess returns using the Fama French factors. So we're going to build a regression here and you need to do a little bit of manipulation, uh, so-called to create this, add this constant. And what this does is it just creates a whole column of ones. And what the one does is it forces stats models to create uh, an intercept or uh, the alpha term in your linear regression. We can then fit a model very easily here. We pass in the excess returns and the X variable. So we are regressing the excess returns against basically the small, the size factor and the value factor. We can then get the hedge weights. Okay, so there's a couple of things going on here. So first of all, let's look at the parameters that we get out of the model. So once we fit the model, we get the constant term, that's the alpha. Then we get the beta coefficient against the size factor. 
excuse me, yes, the size factor, and we get the beta coefficient against the uh, value factor. So the one index just gives us the column of values, basically not the risk-free rate, okay? And then we just turn it, excuse me, the constant, and then we add the negative because these are hedge terms. So what we wanna do is actually put on a position of the number of shares that are equivalent to this parameter. So it's a little bit hard to think about when you've got 0 0.49, but imagine if you were to trade 100, you'd be short 49 shares of something that represented a size factor, and you'd be long 144 shares of something that represented a value factor. And you would essentially be hedging the exposure that you have to those two factors, okay? So we can simulate this portfolio and we can do so through this process here. So we've got this hedge portfolio, which is multiplying with the hedge weights. This is this cool um, operator here. So it just basically does a multiplication between each of these and the hedge weights. So what we're doing here is multiplying the hedge weights times each of the factor returns, okay? And then this is what end, uh, ends up being our hedged portfolio or simulation of it. We can then add that back to the portfolio returns like this and voila, we've got hedged portfolio returns. Okay, let's just put it all together into a single data frame. And this is all pandas, by the way. This is why uh, pandas is so beautiful for small, medium-sized data. You've got the unhedged returns and you've got the hedged returns in the same data frame. Then you can actually create the so-called tracking error, which is essentially the sharp ratio of the hedged portfolio uh, or, or of each. So we can see that um, what we have is a slightly higher sharp ratio or proxy of a sharp ratio for the hedged returns than we do of the unhedged returns. Now this is not annualized. So if I do this times dot square root, uh, 52. I might have to import math here. This gives us the annualized volatility, um, which seems to be quite high. Uh, we are dealing with tech stocks here, but we do get a slightly higher return on the hedged portfolio than we do with the unhedged portfolio. So again, with just a couple lines of Python, we were able to create a so-called hedged portfolio against the Fama French factors. Now, a couple things to check out next. First of all, you can create any portfolio that you want of any assets that you want, number one. Number two, I just did a naive one share per stock portfolio, which you obviously would have something different. And we had no, um, no rebalances, no difference in holdings the entire period. So all of that would impact the difference here. And of course, we're using the Fama Frencher factors as well. You can create your own factor portfolio or you can use your own factors to hedge against as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Just another proof point that Python is great for this type of work. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Cheers.